welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course sandhi in paninian grammar in fact we have reached the culmination of the course we have dealt with the topic of sandhi in quite a lot of detail in the light of pancha sandhi prakarana which is part of the traditional curriculum of paninian grammar we studied various sutras through them we explained various types of sandhis we also studied several examples we classified the sandhi overall into three categories ekasthanika ekadesha dvisthanika ekadesha and also ekasthanika dvyadesha at sandhi has got ekasthanika ekadesha and dvisthanika ekadesha hal sandhi has got ekasthanika ekadesha as well as ekasthanik dvyadesh visarga sandhi and swadhi sandhi can be classified under ekasthanik ekadesh even though we see that the final output contains more than one sandhis these sandhis take place one at a time and do not happen simultaneously so in this particular final lecture let us look at the summary of the course we were dealing with some examples from shrimad bhagavad gita and studying some strategies to split the sandhi let us take some more examples so here we have examples of a plus 0 plus ash being the output from which we can get the input namely a plus y plus ash and then we can get applying the same procedure we saw in the previous lecture a plus ru plus ash as the earlier input and further backwards we can get a plus s plus ash as the input so previously in the examples like dhritarashtra uvacha and sanjaya uvacha and arjuna uvacha we noted down that it is arjunaha sanjaya and dhritarashtra as a separate pad one more clue for splitting that particular sandhi is that there are two vowels which are placed side by side and no sandhi is made of them that is a big clue that this is an output in the form of a plus 0 plus a or a plus 0 plus ash now let us come back to this example a plus 0 plus ash and we find several examples and when i started culling there are innumerable examples within bhagavad gita within the first 10 verses of the shrimad bhagavad gita i found these five examples atrashura so very first verse dharma kshetre kurukshetre samaveta yuyut savaha so this is nothing but samavetah and yuyut savah similarly atrashura maheshvasa bhima arjuna sama yudhi there are three cases in this one string shura is shuraha maheshvasa is maheshvasa bhima arjuna samah 
is Bhimarjuna Sama is Bhimarjuna Samaha. Then Vishishta Ye is Vishishtaha and Ye. Avasthita Yudhe is Avasthitaha and Yudhe. Shura Madarthe Tyakta Jivitaha. Annecha Bahava Shura Madarthe Tyakta Jivitaha. You have Shura Madarthe, that is Shuraha and Madarthe. And you can split the Sandhi by following the same procedure. And there are many cases of this kind you will find in the Bhagavad Gita where you have to be cautious and split the Sandhi in this particular fashion. Let us take the next case namely O plus Ash which is the output of the input O plus U plus Ash. And here are the cases. Yuyudhano viratascha is nothing but Yuyudhanaha viratascha. Yuyudhanaha consists of so Yuyudhana plus U and V. V is an Ash. So this U has substituted Ru. Ru substitutes S. So you have Yuyudhanas and if you want to write it independently it would be Yuyudhanaha. Similarly, Drav, Saubhadro Draupadeyascha. So, this is the output, and the input would be Saubhadra plus U plus Draupadeyascha. D is an Ash. So, Saubhadra plus U. Saubhadra plus U would be the output of Saubhadra plus Ru plus D. Then, it, Ru would be the output of S. So, you have Saubhadra S plus D. And then if you want to write Saubhadra Sa independently, it will be written as Saubhadraha. Similarly, Rishi Kesho Devadattam is Rishi Keshaha and Devadattam. Kunti Putro Yudhishtharaha is Kunti Putraha and Yudhishtharaha. Saghosho Dhartarashtranam is Saghoshaha Dhartarashtranam. Incidentally, Saghoshaha is also an example of the Sandhi where the Visarga after Sa is deleted when Hal follows. By the Sutra, Etat Tado Sulopo Akoranai Samase Hali. Similarly, Avishto Vishidan. Avishto will be the output and the input would be avishta plus u plus v vishidan and this u would be the output for the input ru so avishta plus ru and this ru would be the output of the input sa so you have avishta sa and if you want to write it separately independently you will write avishta which is 1 slash 1 of avishta and you will find once again plenty of examples of this kind scattered everywhere, almost everywhere in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita and also everywhere in Sanskrit. Then this particular type of Sandhi, Shchutva Sandhi, where Sha plus Cha is seen to be the output and the input is Sa plus Cha. So you have Pandavascha and this Sha is the Shchitva Sandhi and so the input of this Sha is Sa. So Pandavascha and this is the 1 slash 3 of Pandava. Similarly Viratascha is the output and the input is Sa plus Cha. So Viratascha, so this Viratas is 1 slash 1 of Virata. Drashtaketush Chekitanaha. So Drashtaketush, this sh is the output and the input would be sa following the rules 8440. Stosh So you will have Drashtaketush Chekitanaha. Drashtaketush, if you want to write independently, then you will write Drashtaketuhu and Chekitanaha. 
Similarly, Kashi Rajascha, Shaibhyascha and Karnascha. In all these cases, sh is the output and s would be the input in the environment of ch following immediately. Now let us look at a very peculiar case which is also very difficult to read at one go. This is 5.8 and a line, a string consisting of no break. So if you have to read this particular line, it will have to be in the following fashion. Pashyai chhrunvan sprashanje ghran nashnan gachan swapain shvachan. I repeat, Pashyai chhrunvan sprashanje ghran nashnan gachan swapain shvachan. So, if this is to be split, we need to know the proper rules of Sandhi, what would be the outputs and what would be the inputs. So here we have marked four, this Nya Ch, this Nya J, Na Na and once again Nya Ch. These are the outputs and we know how these outputs are arrived at and what is the input. So here we have written down the inputs. So the splitting of this particular string would be in this particular fashion. Pashyan plus Sharanvan plus Sprashan plus Jighran plus Ashnan plus Gachan plus Swapan plus Shwasan. These are the constituents of this particular string. When they are woven together, the string becomes one indivisible unit. All these words, they are the present participles. Notably, dhatu plus shatru, the suffix stated in Paninian grammar. And so all these words are the nominative singulars of these shatranta pratipadikas. Pashyat, shranvat, sprashat, jighrat, ashnat, Gachat, Swapat and Shvasat. These are the Pratipadikas and the forms that you see they are the 1 slash 1 masculine forms. Maivakinchit Karomiti Yukto Manyata Tatvavit Pashain Shrudvan Sprashain Jighan Nashnan Gachan Swapan Shvasan. And the meaning that you see recorded in various translations resemble something like this. Even while being a seer, a hearer or a toucher or a smeller or an eater or a goer or a sleeper or a breather. Now let us take each case and try to explain how the Sandhi has actually happened, quoting the relevant sutras. So first let us take Pashyai Chrunavan. We know that this Chru as an output is derived from the input of this kind, Pashyan plus Chrunavan. Because we know that there is a Sutra which applies over here and these are the Sutras, various Sutras. One of them applies and converts this into Pashyai Chrunavan. So if we start from the bottom, here we see Pashyai Chrunvan and we can go back like that or we can come from the top to bottom. First let us come from top to bottom. So we have Pashyan plus Chrunvan as the input. Now 8331, she took allows us to add this T over here. And now we have Pashyanta Shrinvan. Then this Ta, when comes into contact with this Sh, is subjected to Stoschanashchuhu, and this Ta will be substituted by Ch. So we have Pashyancha Shrinvan. Now, because of this Ch, this Na 
will be substituted by y. So, we have Pashyain Ch Shrin 1. Now, because of this Ch being also described as Jai, so this Sh will be substituted by Ch. So, we have Y, Ch and Ch over here. Optionally now, this Ch gets deleted. So, you have Pashyain Chhrn 1. So, you get this particular derivation. In some textbooks, there will be no Ch, there will be just Sh. That is also according to the grammatical rules, mainly because this th is stated to be optional. So, if this th is not added here, you will have only na followed by sh, in which case stos chonas chuhu will apply and this na will be substituted by ya and you will have pashyain shuran 1. So, we have already seen that there are 4 such examples that are possible in a given scenario of this kind. If we go back from the bottom and come to the top, this will be the reverse order and then we shall be able to reach this particular stage Pashyan Shranvan and we will be able to identify this as the input. Pashyan and Shranvan is the output, Pashyan plus Shranvan is the input. Then the next one is Prashain Jighan. This is the output, Prashain Jighan. This is quite simple because we have Prashan and Jighan as the input and we apply 8440 which substitutes this na by ya and so you have Prashain Jighan. So, because ja follows, so Stoshchanashchuhu applies and that therefore we have ya and this ya can go back to na which is the input. And so we have Sprashan plus Jighran as two independent words making Sprashan Jighran as the Sandhi. The next output is Jighran Nashnan. So once again we know that two Nakaras they could be the output in the case where 8332 Gamo Raspa Dachi Nityam applies. Now, Namo Raspa Dachi Namo Nityam requires that this Na should be at the end of the Pada, which it is. It should be preceded by a short A, which it is. So, there is Raspa followed by Nam followed by an Ach over here. Now, this Ach would get the augment Namot. So, it will be added before. Now, because this is Na, the closest amongst the namut augments is na itself. So, we add na over here before and then we get the output nashnan and when we join them together we get jighran nashnan. This is how we can explain this output jighran nashnan as coming from jighran plus ashnan. These would be the two constituents. And lastly, from the line of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, we have this particular output, Svapai Chvasan. And we know that this would be the input, Svapan plus Shvasan. By the application of rules, from Svapan plus Shvasan, we will go and reach this particular stage, which is the output. If we come back from this output, we can also reach the stage of this input. So, first we have Swapan plus Shvasan. Now, she took 8331 applies and adds the over here. So, we have Swapan the Shvasan. Then, because of sh, this the is substituted by ch by the application of 8440 Stoschunas Chuhu. Then, because of this ch, this na would be substituted by y, Swapan ch and Shvasan because of 8440 once again stoschonas chuhu now because this ch can be described as jai it is jai therefore now the sutra 8463 shashchoti will apply over here and chatvam amiti vacham and so we have sh being substituted by ch so this is 
jhai at the end of the pada followed by sh followed by at v is an at and so sh is substituted by ch so we have so panch and chhasan then 8465 applies jharo jhari savarne and optionally drops this ch so we have so pai chhasan this is optional form you can also have so pai ch chhasan or you can also have this ch being optionally done so so pai ch chhasan this is possible or just so pai chhasan this is also possible four forms are possible as we have seen before similarly you can have several examples and several such sandhis as part of shrimad bhagavad gita i hope the treatment of sandhi sutras and the sandhis that we have done in this course will help you decipher the sandhi and the constituents of the text easily there is something to remember as a parting note so we have examples like sukhinah kshatriya parth second chapter and this is 30 second verse so in cases like this where you have visarga plus ksh visarga is to be written and pronounced and no modification or no sandhi is described by paninian grammar because remember ksh is made up of k and sh and so there is this sutra sharpare visarjaniya k is part of khar sh is part of shar so there is sharpar khar and sharpare khari visarjaniya asya visarjaniya eva natu anyat so this is an accordance with 8335 sharpare visarjaniya so visarga is not to be substituted by anything else and you have several examples in the shrimad bhagavad gita and all over sanskrit literature always remember this particular fact when a visarga is followed by ksh pronounce the visarga or write the visarga as visarga and never as anything else now here are three examples in which the result of the sandhi analysis and the complexities involved get more accentuated and highlighted in these three examples there are some strings provided very famous strings and it is shown how the multiple combinations that are possible due to the various kinds of sandhi rules they allow the reader to have multiple kinds of interpretations so multiple kinds of contents can be extracted from one and the same string this is very important and absolutely critical based on the knowledge of sandhi so here is this string nasato vidyate bhavo nabhavo vidyate satah this is 216 from shrimad bhagavad gita i repeat nasato vidyate bhavo nabhavo vidyate satah now this string can be split into its constituents and you will have nasato as first and obviously there is the sandhi so this o is the output and the input is a plus u nasata plus u u is the output of ru because this v is part of hash and so this ru is the output of s so sajisho ru so we know that this is nasata if written separately vidyate bhavo bhavo is again likes nasato na bhavo this wo also is like nasato and so on so now we can split this particular string into two nasato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate and satah but the same string can also be split into into another 
kind of another set of constituents namely nasato vidyate abhavo nabhavo vidyate asataha so as far as the words are con concerned there is this string in which vidyate is followed by the word bhavah and here vidyate is followed by the word abhavah which is extremely opposite similarly here vidyate is followed by sataha and here vidyate is followed by asataha how is this possible this is possible because the output of this a plus a is going to be a like this here similarly a plus a and the output is going to be only a so from this a you can derive two inputs vidyate bhavo no sandhi or sandhi vidyate plus a bhavo both of them are possible from this particular output this is in fact the second one is in fact the way this verse is split by one tradition of the vedanta philosophy this is a very famous sutra from the mimamsa sutras athato dharma jidnyasa and the popular and common and main split is athato dharma jidnyasa but some commentators also split it as athato adharma jidnyasa just as you have a desire to know dharma you should also have a desire to know what is a dharma so as to avoid it that is complementary to the knowledge of dharma now this to this o can be the output and the inputs could be these two to and dharma no sandhi at all or to plus a dharma so o plus a is going to be o this o is coming at the end of the pada and this a is coming at the beginning of the second pada so the output would be o so this can be the explanation of athato dharma jidnyasa based on the sandhi splitting and we have an example within grammar namely the sutra najjhalau and how the later paninian grammatical tradition splits this na especially a into two constituents generally we would assume that najjhalau this a can be split into a plus a na plus ajjhalau but we also can split it as na plus ajjhalau and this a can be split as a plus a so we can derive na plus a plus ajjhalau so this a is additional element that we get out of this particular splitting and thereby negating the homogeneity of, of long vowel a and consonants is possible this we have discussed earlier this is just a recap of what we have discussed earlier so these are the three examples which show the complexity involved in sandhi splitting and multiple explanations or interpretations which are possible based on this particular complexity and that is one of the reasons why there is a lot of over generation which needs to be reduced with the help of the dictionaries and with the help of the sub word matching now to finish this course let us have the cognitive explanation of sandhi and these are the verses which are swopadnya which are created in the commentary written on the sanskrit text shabda sutra by your struli they are following ekam vakyam akhandam sat ekarthasya prabodhakam padais tinga subantaischa samarthais sandhi samyutam sasandhi buddhi samstham tat arthakasha prahetukam shabdakasha pratishthancha vakyam vyaktam dhvanigrahaihi and this is the meaning of the first verse one indivisible sentence together with the words in the form of one thing and many ending in subs which are semantically related and also processed with sandhi denotes one meaning 
and the second verse means that sentence together with the sandhi effects located in the intellect and established in the word space which is the cause of the semantic space is expressed by the emissions of sounds and the second set of verses are this is this vyaktair dhvanik grahai shrotru buddhau vyaktir yada yatha shabdartha kashayos tulya sasandhi ekavakya ja tada tatha prabodhas chet ekarthasya samahitih sasandhi prochyate tatra samvadas samajayat the meaning of the third verse is this by the expressed emission of the sounds when and which expression takes place in the intellect of the listener which is together with the sandhi and which is similar in both the word and semantic space and which is generated out of one sentence and the meaning continues in the next verse then if there is a cognition of one meaning together with the sandhi sandhi in meaning there is fulfillment and then it is said that the dialogue has indeed taken place this is the importance of sandhi sandhi is not just the phonetic description of the sounds being uttered one after the other but this is in fact programmed and this is part of the shabdakasha as well as arthakasha just as we have sandhi of sounds we also have sandhi of arthas and also sandhi of buddhi or cognition so we have buddhi sandhi we have artha sandhi and the one that we studied we have also shabd sandhi or varna sandhi now the final benediction we have studied sandhi and its various facets so far so i close this particular series of lectures by this final benediction i read the verse for you sa sandhi shantaye bhuyat samvadaya cha swatmanah shabdarthayo sada nityam sarva buddhyaikya karakah i repeat sa sandhi shantaye bhuyat samvadaya cha swatmanah shabdarthayo sada nityam sarva buddhyaikya karakah this verse is composed by yours truly and the meaning of this verse is let the sandhi of the word and meaning which is the maker of one intellect out of all always and everywhere be for peace and dialogue with or of one's own self i repeat let the sandhi of the word and meaning which is the maker of one intellect out of all always and everywhere be for peace and dialogue with or of one's own self and i dedicate these verses to all of you thank you thank you for your patience finally as we close this lecture and the course i would like to acknowledge the help i received from various people in making this course a success first of all i would like to thank my ta dr iravati kulkarni for her timely help in the editing overall running of this particular course i would like to specially thank the video team of nptel mr amin sheik tushar desh pande vijay kedare devendra parab and ravi paswan and also the web team of nptel bharati madam and also sandeep thanks are also due to the nptel team at iit madras 
Finally, I would like to thank IIT Bombay for giving me this wonderful opportunity and thank you all.